Um, so today we're making something really exciting. Well, I'm really excited to make it. Today we're making pumpkin scones. Um, I have never made scones before, but I am, I'm really excited because I love to make desserts like this. Um, and I'm hoping that I can break it down so that it is simple for you to understand and for you to be able to do at home because it seems intimidating to make breads and desserts and things like this. Um, you know, because it's not something that you see on a regular basis. Um, but let's try it. So in my bowl, I am gonna add um, my dry ingredients and um, my spices and stuff. And I'm gonna whisk that together. Um, and then in a separate bowl, I'm gonna add my wet ingredients. This is a pretty typical um, baking bread type deal where you mix your dry and your wet ingredients separately. I would like to say while I'm mixing this that um, if you check out the description box, I have listed some other pumpkin recipes if you wanna take a look at those. And in the description box, if you are interested in getting any of the items that I used in the video, so like the whisk or anything like that, um, those are also linked in the description box. So now I had my butter, it's a whole stick of butter. I had it cubed up and in the freezer. It had, it had been in the fridge. So I put that in my dry ingredients and now I am just taking my hand and I'm kind of um, trying to mix that in with the flour. You want it to be, so it's like a, this is gonna sound, it's kind of gross to say, but you want like a chunky flour mixture. Um, you wanna make sure that you're you're not melting your butter though. So if your butter starts to get melty at all, you wanna stop and put the, the whole thing in the fridge and let the butter stiffen up again. What this does is it creates kind of layers in the bread um, and so that when it cooks, the butter melts, it makes the bread moist, um, and it kind of creates like a buttery flakiness. Um, so now I'm adding all of my wet ingredients once I got the butter really mixed in. And I left all of the footage in this because I've never made scones before and I was thinking this doesn't seem like enough wet ingredients. And I thought, let me get a whisk and whisk this because I think that'll be a better um, tool, but then it wasn't. <laughs> so I had to scrape out my whisk and I went back to my spatula. Um, it eventually, it really did come together. I was really worried that it was not gonna be enough liquid. Um, and I know that scones are a little bit on the drier side as far as um, texture goes. Like it's not like a, it's not like a cake where it's like super moist. Um, so once I got that all mixed together, I don't recommend wearing long sleeves <laughs> when you do this, but you have to knead it a few times. Um, about 10 to 12 times, um, just until the dough starts to come together. And I have had issues in the past where like a recipe will say, oh, knead it 10 times and then you're done. But that's not exactly accurate. It kind of depends on like the strength of your knead, um, what you consider like a 10 time need. So I sort of just went off of feeling. Um, once I, you know, I had to flour my board a few times cause it kept soaking up the flour. But once the dough was not like cracking anymore where it has like a big split, that's when I decided to stop kneading. I, I did this for about five minutes, like five to seven minutes. That's when I found that my dough was like together it wasn't um like coming apart anymore it was uh, holding a ball really well um so then i split my dough in half and scones are usually in kind of a triangular shape so i put down a little bit more flour i formed that half into a ball and then i rolled it out into about a six inch circle um you want them the you want the scones to be kind of thick they don't really puff up in when you're cooking them so you need them to be a little bit thicker. So then I cut that in half and then I cut each of those halves into little triangular thirds. I don't think it really matters how you cut your scones. You just want them to be pretty even so that they cook evenly. So then I put those on a lined baking sheet and I had sprayed my baking sheet with a little bit of oil just because I wasn't sure if these would stick or not. And I felt like it would be better to be safe than sorry. And I baked them at 400 degrees. Mine took 16 minutes exactly. And while that was baking, I made an icing. The icing is optional. Um, 
it's just some powdered sugar, some cream cheese, and a little bit of milk, um, and some vanilla extract. And I did, if you wanted it thicker, you could add more powdered sugar and more cream cheese. I wanted to do like a cinnamon roll icing where it's like really thin and drizzly. Um, so once they came out of the oven, I immediately poured the icing on. And then I'm going to sprinkle the top with um, some pecans. You don't have to do the pecans. You could sprinkle the top with some more pumpkin pie spice. Um, you know, you could put you could put walnuts on the top. Um, I don't know if peanuts would be good. Almonds would definitely be good. Um, whatever you wanted to put on top, you could put on top. Um, but these were actually pretty simple to make. Um, and I don't really like pumpkin stuff and these tasted really good. So please try this recipe um, and you can check out our description box for any links. Um, and if you look in the comment section, I will have the recipe in the comment section. If you want to see more recipes like these, check out lovesanddishes.net. If you want to hear more from myself and my mom, we have a podcast. It's called Dorks with Sporks and you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We put out a new video every Monday through Friday, and you can follow us on Facebook at Loaves and Dishes for more. Thanks for watching.